What's going on guys? Chad back with you here on the RC Maker More channel and we have today a full setup instructional video of the new C-Reality CR10 3D printer. Now unlike the, the printer that's on the channel before, this is one of the hottest printers that there is because of its build area. It is a 300 by 300 by 400 build plate and area so you'll be able to print really tall awesome items it's also out of the box super quality really sturdy so there's a, not a lot of messing around there is obviously with anything in this makerspace uh, upgrades and mods that you can do to these things but out of the box people are getting amazing results so basically I've got the version the Hicktop version which came from Amazon so I could get that a little bit faster it's also sold by Gearbest for a little bit cheaper and it's sold by Tiny Machines which they will actually pre-assemble it and test it and make sure everything is good but you pay a little bit more money for that um, the Amazon one comes with like this blue tubing inside here instead of the orange but it is all the same printer so basically what I've done here is I've got everything unboxed and I'm kind of going through the whole setup project and unpackaging. I uh, started with making sure that I have a good level surface and sturdy surface to put it on and I have the main base plate down. I'm going to go over that and I'm going to make sure everything is tight, every, everything is secure and do some measurements and make sure that uh, you know things are kind of lined up good and I'm also going to start installing some of the upgrades which are I printed on my uh, Monoprice Maker Select these are some extra large leveling knobs so you can help get the bed level I've already got all three well three of the four installed um, basically these are great because all you do is just unscrew the leveling knobs all the way off that they come with and then you just pop them right into there and screw these back on so I'm gonna put this fourth one back on and then proceed with the next step so I will be right back so I ran around the bottom here and tightened up all of the feet and all of the screws that are on the bottom of the assembly and what I have done now is I have lowered the bill plate all the way down and I am just checking to see how true it is by putting a straight edge on there and looking underneath and seeing if there are any light gaps so I see a little bit of bowing um, nothing too bad we'll worry about that a little bit more later when we get to putting the, the, the glass plate on um, which is over here and doing our bed leveling. It's important to keep in mind that you can just follow the instructions and people have had lots and lots of success just putting everything together and going for it but my feeling is the more you spend at this point in the build the less hassle you have and the quicker you're going to get better results. So what I've done right now is I've elevated both sides of the rack and I'm feeling the wheels underneath here. There's three wheels on each side of the rail that drives your bed. Now all six wheels should be in contact with the rail and I can feel that one of mine's not. I can spin it as freely as I want to and it's this front one, front right. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to work on that and there's a trick to that because the way that these wheels are set up underneath here. So let's take a look at that right now. And what I have discovered is like a few other people have is that I am missing a washer here. You can see all of these on this side have washers and all of these on this side do not. Alright, so we have three washers on one side and not washers on the other. Now the washers go on 
this side right here if I can get the camera in there and you can see those three concentric nuts right there that is what you are going to tighten with one of the included wrenches and basically you're just going to tighten them so that way you can turn the wheel and the wheel doesn't slip and that's going to pull those wheels against the rail a little bit more and then that way you should be able to turn the wheel and it'll pull the bed so but just make little adjustments to those and they will actually affect the ones on the other side so I'm actually going to be cutting this into uh, the installation video something you might want to do um, while you're installing everything but you can do it whenever um, going from a smaller to a larger bed you'll notice that the, the heat up times have uh, drastically increased and so what some people do and what I'm doing is taking some of this rubber pipe insulation tape and I'm just going to cover the bottom of the heat bed with this so that way it'll help insulate a little bit more and help heat it up a little bit faster the stuff's really sticky so just be careful with it just stick it on cut it to size make some punches through for your holes and that's it now we're going to reattach the bed to the frame but before that you'll want to put in the cable strain relief first before you screw on your extra large thumb wheels so with the next main part of installation there's really no right way or wrong way to do this but basically you have to put the top frame here onto the bottom frame there's two bolts that go up through each side so you can bring each side to a ledge like I did and go up from the underneath or you can somehow get uh, somebody to help you to get those in so get those in uh, really good and tight next part is going to be putting on these T-braces um, if you're looking at the printer the left side is going to get the brace with the switch and this side here is just going to get the plain one so tighten these all up real good all right so now let's take a look at everything let's start with the belts first uh, the first thing is you want these to be as straight out as possible um, you can see that mine is pointed down a little bit so I'm going to actually need to loosen that up means my belt's a little too tight um, and I can actually hear so the rubbing and see the belt move right there if you see um, this one here is pretty much perfect uh, the wheels you got wheels on here and one underneath if you look you want to make sure they are in track and about the same distance you also have wheels over here that ride up and down and this one here has one of the adjustment nuts that you can use with the wrench to actually get it uh, to come in a little bit closer mine was spinning uh, freely right there so I took care of all that and going to button this some more stuff up here and we'll be right back. So I've watched a lot of videos in preparation for this build and I'm just kind of taking everybody's ideas and mashing them together and there's one gentleman I'm going to find his video and link it because I couldn't find it now when I needed it but he was the gentleman that had <clears throat> an issue uh, I can't remember he pointed out a couple issues but one of the issues he did point out was how this belt will move back and forth and slide this way and slide up against it like I showed you and what he ended up doing was printing a basically a washer to put on here uh, to tighten that up so that way it doesn't work well I understand why he 3d printed it because it's pretty much impossible to find anything and I'm gonna do the same thing 
Uh, what I did in the meantime was just go to the hardware store and get these nylon or rubber washer gaskets. I'm going to cut this down a little bit and I'm just going to use that uh, for the meantime until I can get everything uh, get uh, one printed out but that all goes right here in the tensioner assembly so I'm gonna put that back together now with this in here and check that out okay so that's in there and it's good but not great um, but it is doing what it is supposed to do so let's move on to the rest of this build all right, so jumping ahead here a little bit, I've got everything assembled and powered up and running. The wiring is all self-explanatory, X to X, Y to Y. The one thing you do want to do on the power supply here is make sure you are switched to either 110 or 220 based on what country you're in. Here in America, we're 110. Make sure you do that first. Pop in your extruder, extruder. I installed the 3D print back there which is the filament holder and extruder wire holder so that has been installed real easy to do and now I'm going to go through and put on a couple more things and get ready for some printing alright before we call this setup video done and move on to advanced setup uh, what you want to do is check your squareness of everything using a regular square, carpenter square, and I have my bed compressed all the way down as far as it will go. And if we just put our square on here and use your cell phone or a flashlight and just shine the light on one side and look through the other and you'll be able to see a bow or not and see where your light is coming uh, through so you're going to want to do that on your bed you're going to want to do it on the side rails here and then you're also going to want to do a couple things as far as measuring and checking your distances to make sure that everything is square mine all is pretty much right on now um, it's not necessary to really level but I still check uh, level anyway uh, you know it's more important to level the nozzle to the bed but I just like to double check everything for sure so that's going to do it for this video this has been a ton of information and I've had to make a couple trips to the hardware store and everything else I'm going to link all of the little things that I've added to the device um, in the description below and then come back with uh, some more uh, videos here so I'm going to get started right now on uh, getting this puppy level and everything else like that and then get on to printing so we'll see you guys in the next video hopefully this helps some of you out